the genes of a working dog are inherent in the Welsh Corgi Pembroke. The Pembroke's innate intelligence made special training in driving and herding dogs almost superfluous. The clever way of thinking and the unerring instinct for the movements of a cow within a group made the dog a natural and all-around talent. Today, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi acts primarily as a companion dog. In this role, the nature of the animal has settled well. Its active nature, which is always looking for gratification for its urge to move, poses physical challenges for future pet owners. The four-legged friend does not like to put up with a short walk. In addition, he is often superior and knows how to take advantage of educational negligence. Although the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is predominantly a companion dog today, it never learned that role compared to other dog breeds. He's not a very trusting creature. Also, people must first earn his loyalty by committing themselves to satisfy his need for action and work. He is human-oriented if he is allowed to develop his abilities in a manner appropriate to the species. But he's not the classic cuddly type. If you want to get a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, you should be prepared for an exciting journey. The relationship with this dog can only be built with a lot of attention, affection, and joint activities. The dog is peaceful when being walked and does not behave aggressively toward other dogs. If you're looking for a compact ball of fluff, energy, and sass, then look no further than a corgi. These slightly goofy dogs have been roaming the Welsh hills for thousands of years, and now they're here to grace your screens with their presence. So what's the deal with corgis and why have they become so popular with internet denizens? Let's take a closer look at this majestic breed of dog and get to the bottom of it. Number 1. Corgi translates to dwarf dog. Although some people do not entirely agree, the most common translation is that C-O-R translates to dwarf and G-I translates to dog in Welsh. Those who disagree claim that they are actually a watchdog since C-O-R can also mean to watch or gather. Either of these translations fits quite well of course, but I'd rather live in a world where corgis are dwarf dogs. Number 2. There are actually two different breeds of corgis. Before we go any further, we need to make a few distinctions between the two corgi breeds. While they are strikingly different in appearance, they were only recognized as different breeds in the 1930s. Generally, when people talk about corgis, they are referring to the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Originally from the Pembroke region of Wales, this breed is the smaller of the two, with shorter legs and more commonly has a bobtail. The second breed of corgi is the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, which originates from the Cardigan region of Wales. Cardigans are more robust and larger all-round dogs. Their legs are slightly longer in proportion and they tend to weigh more than the average Pembroke Corgi. Their fur can also come in a greater variety of colors. The Pembroke Corgi's ears are more pointed, while the Cardigan Corgi's are more rounded at the tips. Number 3. Cardigan Welsh Corgi's have been around for thousands of years. The Cardigan Corgi is definitely the larger of the two breeds, we know that for sure. However, when we look deeper than that, it gets a bit tricky. Historians have yet to determine the actual origins behind the breeds, but there are some pretty solid theories out there. One theory about the origin of the Cardigan Corgi states that its ancestors arrived from continental Europe to Wales, on the ships of the Celts around 1200 BC. These dogs are said to have been part of the Dachshund family of dogs, which includes the modern Dachshund. If this is true, it means corgis have been in Wales for over 3,000 years. Number 4. 
Pembroke Welsh Corgis are a much newer breed. While we know they have been around since 1107 AD, see, we are still not sure how they got to Wales. The best theory behind the origin of the Pembroke Corgi is that its ancestors crossed the channel along with the Flemish weavers. This original breed of dog is said to have been crossed with the pre-existing Cardigan Corgi breed, which eventually became the Pembroke Corgi we know and love today. Number 5. According to Welsh legends, fairies used to ride corgis into battle. Local Welsh legends have a very different idea when it comes to the origin of corgis. It is said that throughout the night, fairies and elves would ride these magnificent little dogs into battle, using them to pull their carriages. One of the distinctive markings on a corgi's coat adds to this theory. The sides of some corgis are slightly different in color and can form a rather saddle-like shape, which fans of the legend claim were just that. Number 6. Corgis were once used to herd cattle. If you take a walk through the rolling hills of Wales, you will find many sheep, but few cows. However, this was not always the case in Wales, with beef cattle being a much more popular form of livestock until the 19th century. Corgis found their true calling on these endless grassy hills, as their incredible agility and short stature made them the perfect herding dog. Their agility allowed them to duck and avoid the cow's legs, biting them to guide them in the right direction. However, their short stature was a far more vital trait, as they were so low to the ground that they could avoid the kicks of any disgruntled cow. Number 7. Corgis are incredibly intelligent dogs. In fact, they are listed as the 11th most intelligent breed of dog. Corgis in general appreciate a very active lifestyle, which no doubt dates back to their cattle herding days. They are also surprisingly intelligent little dogs, who would have been of great benefit during their working years as well. Corgis kept as house pets have a reputation for misbehaving, but in general, this is because they are not being mentally stimulated enough. If you have a corgi that is misbehaving, try looking up some dog riddles or ways to play with a smart dog. Number 8. Corgis shed a lot. If you've ever been lucky enough to pet a corgi, you may be wondering how such a small dog can shed so much fur. For starters, corgis aren't what you'd call a short-haired dog, so they generally have a lot more hair. On top of this, corgis have two different layers of hair, so there's even more going on. Their undercoat of fur helps insulate them, but it sheds when the weather gets a little warmer, usually in spring. Their outer layer of hair is much longer and doesn't shed quite the same way, although you'll still find it all over your house. Number 9. Corgis are very social animals. Corgis love attention and often act like they never get enough of it. While a dog's personality generally reflects its owners in some way, corgis tend to enjoy cuddles much more. They are also fantastic with children and are often a recommended breed for families. Kids and corgis tend to drain each other's energy, what a win-win. However, they are not only sociable with people. As long as they have been properly trained in their early years, they love to go outside and play with other dogs. Number 10. Queen Elizabeth II has had over 30 corgis in her lifetime. Queen Elizabeth's lifelong passion for corgis began in 1933 when the queen was still a princess. She had been visiting a family friend's property with her sister when she first saw this majestic hound, a Pembroke Welsh corgi. Shortly after this visit, her father bought the family their very own Pembroke corgi, which they named Dookie. When Elizabeth turned 18, she received her own corgi from her, whom she gave the aptly named Susan. 
it could almost be said that through Susan a new royal family was born, the House of Susan I. As of 2020, there have been 10 generations of corgis in the Queen Elizabeth household and they are all descendants of Susan. Number 11. Corgis are very good watchdogs. Which, really, is a very positive way of saying that they bark a lot. However, on a more serious note, they are very loyal and protective dogs. While a corgi may not be exactly the best in terms of preventing an intruder from breaking into your home, they'll definitely wake up the whole house in the process. Number 12. Corgis are surprisingly fast. If you've ever been lucky enough to experience a corgi zooming, you'll surely agree with me. Corgis have been recorded running at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour, which is much faster than they appear to be capable of running. Their great speed is due to their ability to use more upper body strength than other dog breeds. Despite their dwarfism, corgis somehow managed to maintain a certain air of royalty. Perhaps it is due to the fact that they are an ancient breed, or quite possibly it is simply a mental connection between corgis and the Queen of England. Either way, when corgis come to rule the world one day, I for one will welcome our lovely new overlords. Let us know in the comments below so we can continue being proud of this breed walking among us. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. It's as simple as that.